In this video, I'm going to go over how to do some of these chain rule problems and chain rule without formulas given tables and given graphs. So in this first problem, number 52, they tell us that h of x equals the square root of 4 plus 3 f of x. So I'm going to rewrite that as 4 plus 3 f of x, the whole thing, to the 1 half power. By writing it that way, I can see that the 4 plus 3x is my baby, and I'm doing that to the 1 half power. So h prime of x is going to be 1 half of that to the negative 1 half times the derivative of whatever that is, which is 0 plus the derivative of 3f of x is 3f prime of x, because remember that 3 is just a constant, so the derivative of f of x is just f prime of x. So the derivative of 3f of x is 3f prime of x, and then here I would leave my baby inside. Now, to evaluate h prime of 1, I just put a 1 in everywhere, so I get 1 half, 4 plus 3 times f of 1, and f of 1 is 7, to the negative 1 half, times 0 plus 3f prime of x, and f prime of 1 is just 4, so I have 1 half of 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4 is 25, so I have 1 over root 25, times 3 times 4, which is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6, and root 25 is 5, so 6 fifths would be my answer to that question. In number 53, they're asking us, if h of x equals f of g of x, so now my baby is going to be this g of x function, and I'm doing f of g of x, then find h prime of 1. So h prime of x is going to be the derivative of f of box is f prime of box times the derivative of the box. So what is that box? That d box is just g of x. So what's the derivative of g of x? That would just be g prime of x. So that's just a chain rule. To find h prime of 1, I would do f prime of g of 1. What is g of 1? g of 1 is 2 times g prime of 1. And g prime of 1 is just 6. Now I have to do f prime of 2. f prime of 2 would be 5. 5 times 6 is 30. So that's part A. Part B is saying big H of x is this g of f of x function. So now my baby is the f of x, so I'm doing g of box. The derivative of that big H is going to be the derivative of g of box is g prime of box times the derivative of that box. That box is just my f of x function, and the derivative of f of x is just f prime of x. So again, that's just a chain rule. h prime of 1 is going to be g prime of f of 1. What is f of 1? f of 1 is 3 times f prime of 1. And what is f prime of 1? f prime of 1 is 4. So I have g prime of 3, which is 9, 9 times 4 is 36. So that's how you do that one. I'm actually going to just add on a bonus problem here. What if they told us, and I might not be able to figure this out from the table because I might not have enough values, but what if we have some other function k of x equals f of 4x squared and what if we have some other function, L of x, which is for f of x squared? Now, let's try and take the derivative in both of those cases. So in this one, k prime of x, well, this is f of box. So the derivative of f of box is f prime of box times the derivative of the box, right? And what's in my box? That's a 4x squared. And what's the derivative of my box? That's just an 8x, okay? So that would be, if I wanted to evaluate 
k prime of 1, I would be doing f prime of 4 times 1 squared is 4 times 8 times 1 is 8. Now, my table, I didn't have f prime of 4, so I can't evaluate that, but that's how I would do that problem. Versus, in this um, part D, I'm doing 4. Now, this is my baby because I'm doing box squared. You see the difference there? L prime of x is going to be, the 4 is just a constant, so it's just hanging out, 4 times. The derivative of box squared is 2 box to the first power. And what's in the box? F of x. I don't really need to write to the first power, but I'm just going to write it for right now, times the derivative of the box. And what's the derivative of the box? The derivative of f of x is f prime of x, all right? So now I have 4 times 2 is 8, f of x times f prime of x. If I was going to evaluate l prime of 1, then I would have 8 times f of 1. f of 1 in this case was 3. And then f prime of 1 is 4. So that would be 32 times 3, or 96, as my answer there. Now in this final problem, it says that h of x is f of f of x, so that's my baby there. And g of x is f of x squared, so that's my baby there. If I want to find h prime of x, again, that was f of f of x. So the derivative of f of box... Okay, the derivative of f of box is f prime of box times the derivative of the box. So f prime of box times the derivative of the box. What's in the box? f of x. And what's the derivative of the box? f prime of x. So that's going to be my derivative. Versus, if I'm doing the g function, so let me just find g prime of x over here, that is f of box. The derivative of f of box is f prime of box times the derivative of the box. f prime of box times the derivative of the box. So f prime, what's in the box? x squared. What's the derivative of the box? Derivative of x squared is just 2x, right? Now if I'm doing in this one h prime of 2, I would have f prime of f of 2 times f prime of 2 f prime, what is f of 2? Well, this is my f of x function drawn. f of 2 is just what y value do I get when the x value is 2? That's 1 times f prime of 2. What does f prime of 2 mean? That means the slope of the tangent line at 2. So here we're really going to just have to approximate this. That's that tangent line right there. I'm going to say that's maybe negative 1. So f prime of 2 was what I evaluated first, and I said that's about negative 1, about a 45 degree line going down. And then what is f of 1? That would be this right here. And that's a little bit less steep, maybe negative a half. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. So 1 half would be my answer to that problem. Now, if I'm doing g prime of 2, then I would have f prime of 4, because 2 squared is 4, times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 times f prime of 4. f prime of 4 is just the slope of the tangent line at 1, 2, 3, 4, so right here. That looks like it's about up 2 over 1. So maybe about 2. So my answer there would be 8. So that's kind of how you do these types of problems.